What's up everyone? It's me and my sous chef here and today we're going to show you how to make pineapple stir fry with rice. So let's get going. All right, so this can be kind of a fridge meal. You don't really need to be too crazy about it. Um, but I work at a farmer's market. My kitchen is at a farmer's market, so I have a lot of access to some very nice produce. Um, so I always have nice stuff in my fridge right now. So we have some nice uh, heirloom carrots that we're gonna use. We're gonna use a nice summer zucchini squash and a red bell pepper. Uh, and then to kind of jazz it up a little bit, I have some cashews here that I'm going to roast in the oven. Um, and I'm gonna make these like super spicy uh, because the pineapple is gonna be really sweet and it's gonna be kind of a sweeter sauce. Um, so these will kind of be a nice balance. Uh, and then we'll also be cubing up and, and browning some tempeh as well uh, for some protein. And this is my first video in uh, I don't know how long it's been. So there might be some fuck ups, but it's all good. So we're gonna start by getting a baking sheet here putting these cashews on the baking sheet, throwing that in the sink, getting some neutral vegetable oil there. And then I just have some salt, good pinch of salt there. And these are just red pepper flakes. Uh, that's all I had left in my, in my spice uh, section, like from the hot pepper that I have to choose from. So that's what I'm gonna go with a pretty heavy hand there. And I'm just gonna kind of kind of mix this in. And if you didn't have these hot pepper flakes, you know, you could leave them out. You could use cayenne pepper. But I like the way that it kind of there's kind of flex of the pepper in the uh, on the cashews there. And that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna wash my hands up. And excuse the uh, the multiple contraptions that I have going on. There's a real fruit fly problem. So we have one here, we have two over there, and we have one to the right of our dish area. So do whatever it takes, you know. These hot summer days can get really out of hand. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven for about 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes at 400. I'm gonna put a timer on so I don't forget. I'm gonna do five minutes to see where we're at. All right, so now I'm gonna get started on the tempeh here. So I'm just gonna get my knife here. And this is a package of plain, uh, plain tempeh. You can get all different kinds at the store. But uh, what this is, this is essentially soybeans that they ferment into this cake, this square cake essentially. And, uh, and yeah, they ferment it so a lot of people have soy issues, so this is good because it's already been fermented, the soybeans. So, you know, when you eat it, it's broken down already a little bit. So you don't need to really worry about if you deal with uh, bloating or gas when you eat soy. This, is, uh, this will kind of erase that. So I'm just going to cube these up into a little, little bite-sized pieces here. I'm just going to cut up the whole brick. I like to do everything kind of at once. Kind of saves you some time. And then I'm just going to get my cast iron here preheating. You don't have to use it. So I got two bowls here. One bowl is going to be for vegetable scraps. Uh, and one bowl is going to be for the, uh, the vegetables. It doesn't really matter the vegetables that you use. Um, I like to use whatever I have in my fridge. It's a great way to use stuff up. Just gonna cut the ends of these carrots off, put them in my compost scrap bowl, and then I'm just gonna wash everything real quick. Even I, even though I am buying stuff like pretty, or all this stuff is organic and like very, like literally made down the street or grown down the street, I should say. It's still important to to wash your vegetables because you know you never know who's uh, who's touching your stuff. All right. So yeah, with all this stuff here, it's important to uh, cut everything the same size. So I'm just using this purple carrot because it looks really beautiful inside with that nice yellow fleck. We're just gonna cube this up here. Get 
Get my other bowl there. I don't know why I got that peeler because I'm not peeling these carrots, but maybe I was thinking I was going to. And yeah, if you don't like carrots, you could swap these out for like, I don't know, literally anything. Broccoli would be nice. Um, cauliflower would be great. I just like to use a lot of the same shape of vegetables, like carrots, zucchini are all the same shape. So give these a nice little stir ski there. Do another, I don't know, three minutes on that. Cut these, go back to these carrots. And again, I'm just trying to cut these to the same size. I kind of want everything to be like this. We're not doing like a fried rice dish, but this is like a quick kind of dish you could do. You get home from work, you know, um, pretty easy whip up here. Just cut the ends off this zucchini. I was really hoping that there'd be some funky design on the inside, but it is not looking like there's going to be. So I'm gonna do like three long ways here because I find zucchini can get very mushy, especially if it's, the only way I like zucchini really is cooked on the barbecue. So since we're not doing the barbecue, I'm just gonna cut this up very small. And that's a great tip. Like, you know, if you don't like a vegetable, just cut it up really small so you won't even notice it and then gradually start to incorporate it more into different dishes and then it will start to grow on you. Oh, already cut that one. Zucchini is very uh, satisfying to chop though. It's, uh, it's very soft. So now with the bell pepper here, we'll just go top and tail on the bottom there. And just right around the core like that. And then I'm just gonna go over it and just kind of cut these whiter pith stuff out. And yeah, you can use any bell pepper. I really like the sweetness of a, uh, sorry, a red bell pepper. They're the sweetest. They're left in the ground for the longest. The less sweet of the bell peppers would be a green bell pepper. You know, get into gardening and you learn a lot of stuff. Not that that's a super complicated gardening thing, but you know. And again, we're just cutting this up into the same size as everything else. You can do larger chunks, but I'm a big fan of like small chunk kind of stir fries. It's a lot more less time consuming to cook. Everything kind of cooks at the same time as the rice. And, uh, and yeah. So we got our vegetables chopped up here. Nice little variety of vegetables. I'm gonna get my wooden spatula here and just give this a stir. Got some nice, almost burning on the bottom, but it's not burning, you know? It's only burning if you call it that. I'm gonna give a nice little glug of vegetable oil in here just to promote crisping up. I'm gonna check on these cashews here. They're looking pretty banging to me. So they've definitely changed color. They've gotten a little bit darker. I wouldn't wanna take them any farther than that or else they would start to burn. So we're just gonna set those aside. And now we're gonna hit this. So this is like a definition of like a weekday prep up here. Um, we're gonna hit this with some spices. So we're gonna do some, some garlic and ginger and kind of just start building those layers of flavor. And then we'll get going on the sauce here. All right, so for the sauce vibe here, uh, it's gonna be a soy based sauce with a little bit of stuff to like kind of funk it up a bit. So we're gonna go with about half, 
three quarters of a cup to a half cup of soy sauce. And then this is just some garlic heavy hoisin. So this is like a nice sweet kind of like almost like a barbecue sauce. So we're gonna go with a couple tablespoons of that. And then this is a fermented black bean garlic sauce. This is like super umami. It's almost, it's like a paste. It's not really a sauce. So we're gonna go with a couple tablespoons of that. This can be found like really the international aisle of any grocery store. And then this is a unique product. This is like a hot maple. So hot honey is all the rage. But then this guy I saw on Instagram started creating this hot maple. So it's like a vegan alternative. It comes out very slowly because I think it's used for topping. Um, but we're just gonna go with about a teaspoon of this just for a little bit of balanced sweetness there. Mmm, pretty, pretty good. I'm just gonna put that all that the stuff back in the fridge. It's important to, you know, put stuff away as you're as you're cooking here, so you don't get overwhelmed with the mess. All right, so this tempeh is looking good here. Now I'm gonna add in the veg. And again, I cut everything very small, so it's not gonna take a long time to cook. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit this with a hit of rice wine vinegar. That's some flavor time, man. Since the pan's really hot, it will kind of evaporate quick, so you want to uh, stir that stuff around. A little pinch of salt. That helps like the vegetables kind of cook down a little bit. All right, and then we're gonna get our last ingredient here, the pineapple. So this is just canned rings of pineapple, nothing fancy. I'm gonna hit the, this with a little bit of pineapple juice actually. And then I'm gonna do all of this. So I got four rings of pineapple juice. I'm gonna save this. In case I want to balance the sweetness again. And we're just going to kind of chop this up. Fresh pineapple would be ideal, but again, I don't want you going out to the grocery store just for one pineapple. It's a waste of time. Canned stuff is great. Lasts in your fridge forever. Stir that in. This is looking pretty banging. The cool, cool thing about cutting the tempeh that small is just by naturally stirring it, it starts to almost crumble like, like a ground pork or a ground beef. And then I also actually went ahead and chopped up some green onions at work and I brought them home. These are, our, these are like local Ontario green onions. So they'll just look how bright and green they are. We put a couple of those in and then I'm gonna save the rest for a little nice garnish vibes. What I'm gonna do with these cashews actually, is I'm gonna move them to a different bowl so they stop cooking. All right, we are looking all right here. Now let me just check this rice. Fork that a little bit and let it vibe out on the side. All right.
right, so this has been cooking for a couple minutes. I really don't like overcooked vegetables. So I'm gonna add my sauce in now. Make sure you, that, that fermented black bean paste loves to sit, hang out at the bottom, so make sure you scrape all that in. Just mix it in so everything's incorporated. If you want to, you can add a little splash of water to thin the sauce out a bit. I got this pineapple juice that I'm gonna thin it out with. And you don't really need to add cornstarch or anything because there's a lot of starches in that, that jarred hoisin um, that will thicken it up as you heat it. Mmm. Just gonna turn this down a little bit. Let that finish cooking for a couple more minutes. See, that's all the compost we had for our entire dinner. That's not bad, right? Gonna get some plates, actually. Gonna get some fancy bowls. Dine with Fable. Dine with Fable, if you want to uh, sponsor us, let me know, man. We can hook that up. So I'm not gonna do like a fried rice. We're gonna do like rice in the half. Kind of like this, you know? And this rice is just like a Uncle Ben's brown rice. Really, really nothing fancy about that. And then I'm going to get, what am I doing here? Oh, I need a spoon of some sort. And I'm just gonna plate up, man. This was a quick whip up. I think this took 10 minutes. I guess we'll see in the video length, but just so colorful. And then I'm gonna garnish some more of these green onions. And then, cause I'm kind of weird, some toasted sesame seeds would be next level, but everything but the bagel seasoning is uh, close second. And there you have it. Pineapple stir fry with ground tempeh and brown rice. 10 out of 10, let me know if you wanna see what you wanna see next. We're gonna try and do a video a week here, uh, maybe a video a month realistically, but uh, thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you post this, if you make this recipe, uh, let me know and uh, tag me in a photo, post it online. I'd love to see it. See you around.